Okay, once again, in the last video, I've introduced you to the stored program concept, concept that was formulated by, by Jan van Neumann and is being used even until today in the design of computers. The stored program concept is a landmark invention in the history of computing because even nowadays, uh, computers are designed after the stored program concept, which means that computers usually load programs into memory before executing them, even though your files, or rather your programs are saved as files in your hard disks. In this video, I'd like to show you or demonstrate how the program execution on the IAS machine is going to be performed as designed by Jan van Neumann. Uh, this in front of you is the Van Neumann architecture of the IAS machine, particularly the program control unit. Remember at this point that the arithmetic logic unit performs the arithmetic operations and the program control unit will only perform control of the fetch and execution of programs. Let me show you a sample program that we will run in the IAS memory. For example, we have the following program. In the memory, programs are addressed sequentially from 0 to n. For example, we have the following commands. Okay. The first command being addressed as 0, 0, 0. Second command sequentially is addressed as 0, 0, 1. Let me type. Let me type the command again. Let's type. Here is your commands. These are just example commands. They may not make sense, but what I'd like to demonstrate is the how programs are be are being executed. So, in order to demonstrate how it works, we have to run the program command per command, or one by one. So, when the computer starts running, or when the IAS computer starts running, automatically the, pro the program counter, which is also called the PC, is set to a value of 000, which means that it's now being pointed to the first command in the It now points to the first command in the program. The whole process starts with a cycle called fetch, fetch and execute. The execution process is done by the arithmetic logic unit, especially if it's an arithmetic logic instruction. If it's a program instruction or execution of a program, it is done by the program control unit. So the first thing to do 
is to transfer the command which is pointed by the program counter to the program control unit. It is usually stored into two registers. One register is called the IR or the arithmetic logic unit and the second register is the MAR or the memory address register. Every operation in a program contains two things or two parts. It will have an operation and an operand. In this case, if you have the command add M100, the operation is add and the operand is 100. During the fetch process, this the, the, insert, the operation and the operand will be transferred to the IR and the MAR respectively, such that the IR here becomes and the MAR becomes 100. And then uh, upon transferring the instruction, after transferring the instruction to the program control unit, control is passed on to the arithmetic logic unit to execute the add instruction. While the add instruction is being executed, the program com uh, control unit will wait for the execution to finish. Now, upon the execution, after the first instruction is executed, the next cycle is initiated. It starts by incrementing the program counter by 1. So this becomes from 0, 0, 0, okay, this now becomes 0, 0, 1. And this now points to the second instruction. I hope you follow. So it starts a whole new cycle once again. So it, the, the process is just repeated. The instruction sub M101 is transferred from memory into the control unit. It splits the two components, the operand, the instruction and the operand, the IR becomes sub, and the MAR becomes 101. And then being a sub, control of the execution is transferred to the arithmetic logic unit. And while it's being executed, the program control unit waits. When it's done, it will repeat the whole process again. It starts by incrementing the program counter by 1. From 0, 0, 1, it becomes 0, 0, 2. So this now points to the third instruction in memory. After incrementing the program counter by 1, the next step is to transfer the opcode or the operation and the operand into the program control unit itself. It splits okay, the operation which is jump and the operand which is 10 into the IR and the MAR respectively. Now in this case, the operation is not an arithmetic instruction. It doesn't do any arithmetic, which means that this will not be executed by the arithmetic logic unit. However, this will be executed directly by the control unit itself by copying the contents of the MAR to the PC, which means that this will now be transferred to the program counter. So consequently, the value 10 will now be copied to the memory address rather to the program counter, which, which makes it 10. So now it's pointing to the next instruction is not address 4, but address 10 be, being, uh, being a jump instruction. So now this points to address 10, which means that the program will jump execu execution to a different address other than the next instruction. So it repeats the whole process. It proceeds by fetching the op operation to the IR, which is mul, and the operand, which is 200, 
to the MAR. Now, since the next instruction is an arithmetic instruction, control is then again transferred to the arithmetic logic unit. And while it's being executed, the program control unit will wait. Upon completion of the instruction, the process of repeat of incrementing the program counter is repeated. So which means that this will become we erase this. The program counter becomes eleven from ten because it was incremented by one. So now we can say that the program counter points to the eleventh command. There. And then it proceeds to the next step by fetching the, the operation into the IR and the operand into the MAR, which means the IR will become div, and the MAR becomes two hundred. Okay. So after the fetch, the control is transferred to the Arithmetic logic unit with division being a, an arithmetic operation. And the program control unit then waits again for the arithmetic logic to fi finish. And then it will proceed to the next cycle. It does so by incrementing the program counter by one again. We have to erase this. 11 plus 1 is 12. So this becomes, the program counter now becomes 12, which points to the Next instruction. So it then proceeds to splitting the operation and the operand into two parts with the operation stored to the IR, which is a jump, and the operand to the MAR, which is a two. Now, since this is not an arithmetic operation, it's a branch control instruction. Therefore, this will not be executed by the arithmetic logic unit. In this case, it's the program control unit which will execute this. It does so by copying what is in the memory address register to the program counter. So the next execution will set the program counter to 2 because it's a jump 2. So, it will now point to, again, to a previous instruction, this time back to instruction 2. And the whole process repeats. So, what we are trying to show here is the program control unit uh, serving the purpose of the conveyor belt, which reads the or scans the program source code one by one as what is done in the Harvard Mark 1. So, in this case, the control of the program is done by the control unit by transferring the operand and the operation to the MAR and the IR respectively. And the operation, the arithmetic and logic operations are being given to the arithmetic logic unit. I hope you follow because in the succeeding video, I'm going to show you a sample program and trace it and demonstrate how it really works in the IAS computer. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.